Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am finally going to do my review of REM Beauty, which is Ariana Grande's makeup collection. As you know, I've had family over for the past week, so I didn't get to film this collection immediately when it came in. But since I wasn't filming, I was actually using this makeup off camera for the past week. I've tried pretty much everything multiple times. So I figured if I can't give you a timely review, the least I could do was give you an in-depth review and I've had a lot of fun playing with her makeup line. I have a lot of good stuff to say about the brand and of course I am a makeup reviewer. I do have some negative things to say about a few products as well. This is a completely unbiased review you guys. We're just gonna forget who is even behind the brand. I am reviewing these makeup products simply as what they are makeup products. It's always tough for a YouTuber to review a brand created by somebody that the viewers most likely love if you're watching this review. I'm not an Ariana Grande stan, but I am a huge makeup stan and I love knowing a lot about the makeup on the market and that's what I'm here to test for you guys. A lot of you guys seem interested in knowing my thoughts coming from my perspective. If you're new here, I have most of my review expertise, if you will, in the luxury and high and range of things but of course I do like to dabble into affordable brands just to see what's out there. Yeah but I'm really excited that even though this review is late by YouTube standards I can give you some really thorough thoughts that I've collected over the last week. So I've picked up mostly one of everything from every formula. There were a couple formulas that I skipped out on but in terms of a first launch really great range here. Now the beauty brand is under Forma Beauty, which is the Morphe umbrella. So definitely a lot of connects there, giving them the ability to create such a large makeup line. We don't have any complexion products really, just to highlight, but I think that's completely fine for a brand starting out. And the items that they do have available seem to come in a large array of different colors and options in that way. We're gonna start off with all of the eye products. So the first thing that I have for you is the eyeshadow palette. Now there are three eyeshadow palettes available, two of which I find to be a little bit more neutral. I of course had to go with the purple eyeshadow palette. I love purple eyeshadows. They're probably the colorful makeup that I wear the most if I'm going to wear color. So I picked up the Midnight Shadows eyeshadow palette. The neutral ones did look nice, but they definitely looked like something I have a thousand times over, which is why I chose to go with this one. The the box itself is pretty plain. I mean, I like it. It's, <laughs> it's simple. I think it looks good. It goes with the theme of the brand. So if you need some information on the palette, it is made in the USA with imported and domestic parts and it has a 24 month shelf life and I like that shelf life. That's really good. You get 8 grams of product and this is $24. I think that's a pretty good deal. This brand is not high end prices, but it's not affordable prices. I Either. I'd say it's on the upper end of affordable, just right, like I guess mid range. More mid range prices, sometimes leaning more high end depending on what you pick up. It's a really great price point for Ariana's audience because I do think she has a younger demographic, so that would make sense. And for the price point, I'm just gonna say this I'm pretty impressed with the quality of the products. So here's what the eyeshadow palette component is going to look like. And I know a lot of you are waiting for me to give you the verdict on how the packaging in this line feels because you gotta admit, it looked really, really cheap online. The packaging was certainly not my style and aesthetically still not my <laughs> preference for packaging, but that's just more personal. I don't know, this looks like a piece of aluminum to me. It's not very cute to me. But in terms of how it feels, for a $24 eyeshadow palette, it's right on par of that. I had comments saying that people were saying the quality of the packaging was luxurious. It's it's not luxury packaging, but for a $24 eyeshadow palette, this is what the packaging should be like, you know. It opens smoothly, it has sturdiness to it, it doesn't feel like cheap plastic. There's a little bit of weight to it, nothing crazy. Yeah, the packaging is fine. It feels a lot better than it looks, and I still think just looking at it, it looks really cheap in hand, but the feeling of it isn't cheap. Anyways, here is the eyeshadow palette, and 
you do get a mirror. I'm going to quickly swatch these for you just so you can see how they would apply on the hand. So let me turn the lighting down just a little bit for you. And I painted my nails and they're already chipping. So we're gonna ignore that, but I painted them this morning. Okay, so let's get these first three colors. This palette is quite light. So this is the first three shades. That's shimmer. The silver right here is super good and it definitely applies and wears as good as it's swatched. And you can see that the mattes are a little bit more faint. And then let's get to the deeper end of the palette here. And you'll see these two shades are shimmers and this black has a pop of glitter and there are three mattes in here. Yeah, you can see this palette is swatching pretty, pretty nice. And so here are my swatches of the Midnight Shadows palette. I really like this curation of colors. I think it's really beautiful. And I mean, looking at the other shadow palettes that they have available, this one by far is the most exciting to me. The others just, they looked a lot of other <laughs> shadow palettes that I have. So this one was the fun one. I'm gonna do this eye and then I'm going to come back and show you how I got the look. Okay, so I've been thinking about this halo eye in my head all week. So I finally did it. <laughs> like I said, I've created quite a lot of looks with this palette for a little six pan. There's a lot of versatility. I've done an easy all matte eye. I did a smoky eye with this one pretty much all over the lid. And I did a silver look with a pop of this. If you check out my Bridgerton and Pat McGrath first impressions thoughts video, you'll see that look. I did film on that day. That was my favorite look. Uh, but yeah, I'm surprised. Pleasantly surprised at the versatility. So we're gonna start off with this cream shade right here. And I'm going to set underneath the brow. I love this shade. It's perfect for this eyeshadow palette. They definitely needed to have it. it. Just lifts this area of the brow under here. You can use it as an inner corner highlight. You can kind of put it all over to kind of set down your base. Great essential shade. I'm going to continue to use this Kaleidos S1 brush and we're going into this shade right here. So again, I feel like this is such an essential shade for the type of colors in this look. It is the perfect transition shade for the kind of looks that you create with this palette. Very happy that they decided to add this in. And you can see it's blending on quite softly, very easy to use, not too chalky or anything like that, not too powdery. Like it a lot. Okay, so we're gonna go in with a little bit more depth. I'm using an Esom V35 and we're going into this shade right here. Now this shade I do wish had a little bit more pigment. As you can see, it's quite soft. It's very easy to work with though, so I definitely don't dislike it. I still like it and I think for Ariana Grande's demographic, really great for a beginner or somebody who isn't a makeup obsessed person like myself. And I'm going to also put this in the inner corner. And this color is also very easy to blend. But like I said, I do wish this had a little bit more pigment to it. What I'm getting from this palette is that the matte shades are quite soft. They aren't going to be packed with pigment, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I think they could use a little extra oomph personally. Okay, we're going to work into the black now. I love this black because you can see that it's shimmery, but it works just like a matte. So it's got some versatility there. This is my Sonia G Definer brush and make sure you have your brush chopped off so you don't make a mess. Just gonna press this in the outer corner. I don't know why it's not showing up. It was showing up fine on the other eyelid. Maybe I shouldn't tap my brush off so much. Not too messy of a black. I'm not getting any fallout really. Then again, follow through with that halo technique on the lower lash line. I am gonna work a little bit just to blend it out, but I'm not so focused on blending this black out perfectly because we do have a little bit of layering going on. But this black, pretty nice. I like it a lot. Next up, we're going into this shade right here. This shade's not perfect. It actually is quite messy. If you're going to apply it with a brush, Prepare yourselves because you get a lot of fallout with this and especially since it's dark, it's really messy. I normally don't like to wet my brush for reviews, but it needs to be done in this case because I just don't want to mess up my face makeup. You can get away without using the shadow wet if you use a finger, but you can see how it's really just not solidly applying. There is some crumbliness to it. So this shade 
If you pack it on your finger and press it into your eye, if you have a sticky base on, it's fine. But you do need to work with it a little bit. Like you can see, even wet, getting some fallout. I'm gonna use the tip of my brush and I'm also gonna apply this on the lower lash line. I'm just using some Mario Badescu setting spray. I'm more focused on just pressing it into the skin than I am the placement, because that's what I need to focus on for this shade. But it's beautiful, but she's a little messy. So I'm gonna go in with a blending brush, kind of work out those edges. And I just need you to know, like this shade isn't bad, but it's the worst shade in this palette. And then we're gonna go into the best shade in this palette, which this silver, is super good. Now it's not the most metallic silver that I've used, but it is creamy. As you can see, there are no particles falling out. Don't need to use my brush wet. It's just gorgeous and it lasts all day and doesn't crease. The longevity of these eyeshadows, I will say, very impressed with them. I typically don't have an issue with longevity, but I did notice I wore this multiple days doing a lot of activities and at the end of the night after 12 hour wear in some cases, particularly the eyeshadow looked like the freshest part of my makeup. It just looked the way that it did when I first applied it in the morning. So I'm impressed with the longevity as well. Let's clean up the fallout. I mean, here's the look. Just a simple halo eye. I really like this eyeshadow palette. The color stories aren't super unique, but if it's something that you're interested in, I don't think you'll be disappointed with these. Really, really solid. So the next thing that I picked up were both formulas of the liquid eyeshadow. She has a matte formulation and a shimmer formulation. Here's what the packaging on the cardboard looks like again. Really, really simple. I like how the color design, so you know what color you're grabbing for. You can see that. Love that. So I did pick up one matte and one shimmer. Details on these, let's see. These are made in the USA with imported and domestic parts. 18 month shelf life, which is, again, is really good for liquid products. So we're gonna first talk, talk about the liquid that I picked up. So this is $16. There's numerous amounts of shades. All of them are in the nude family. I picked up the shade G2G. My vision for this was like a cut crease or something. So the day that I wore it, I put it all over my lid and then I just put a berry powder eyeshadow on the outer corner. This is what it looks like. You can see it swatches with pigment. It's a pretty peach color and it was fine and dandy when I applied it. I liked it. I kind of don't love this color but that was a me problem and I thought it looked really pretty all over my eyelid and with that burgundy outer corner color, but honestly, you guys, this creased terribly. I even wore it one day when I set it with powder. It still creased. It did not last at all on me. So this one was kind of a dud for me. Not a fan of it. But on the contrary, the other shade that I got, which is the shimmer formula, is Science Fair. Now, I knew this was a risky color to get because sometimes these can be patchy, this particular color, but, but this... I like this one, so I think the shimmers are the way you want to go and maybe pass on the mattes. The packaging is really simple. It looks like a pill to me. <laughs> uh, again, for $16, completely appropriate packaging. Has a little bit of weight to it. Feels nice and easy to open. And then here's what the applicator looks like. And look, you can see this guy has a strong pigmented base. Sometimes with a color like this, you will see a lot of patchiness. It's not that bad. I feel like I have a ColourPop Super Shock that looks exactly like this. This isn't as glittery as I would like it to be for liquid shadow, but I'm looking to have a lot of different colors, so maybe it's just the color that I got, but I feel like I could get a similar effect to this on my eyelid if I use one of those eyeshadows that's like matte with like some glitter particles in it. It gives a similar effect. It's not as glimmery as I would want it to be, but nonetheless, it lasted all day. It didn't crease like the matte liquid shadow, and I think it has a good level of pigmentation. For example, I'm just gonna run it along my lower lash line for you. It looks great on its own. You don't need to have a base underneath like I do right now, but you can also have a base underneath if you like it. It's really easy to apply. It doesn't get too crackly if you apply a lot of product. I would suggest maybe just putting a little bit on your eyelid and then using your finger to blend it out. I think it's best if you do put a colored base underneath, whether it be black or purple. I think this just helps the glimmer stand out. But no, I really like this. I think it's surprisingly good. I tried the matte shadow before this, so my hopes were really not good with this one. You can see 
How pretty is that? Let me just make it even. And then once it sets down, you can see it feels a little sticky still, but it hasn't been long enough, but it really isn't budging. So this one I really like. So that brings us to our next order of business, which is eyeliners. There are two different formulas that she came out with, an eyeliner marker and a coal eyeliner pencil. So we'll start off with the coal pencil. There's white, gray, and black. Interesting. I don't have a lot of gray eyeliners, but I did just end up going with the white. Let's see. Also made in the USA with imported and domestic parts. 36 month shelf life. That's a long time. It really is just very simple packaging. This is $17, which actually is more of a high-end price. Let me swatch it for you. Mine is a little dirty from the first time I used it, but there you go. You see that? Yeah, it's a white eyeliner. It is twist up, so you don't sharpen it, which I don't love. But you can pull this out to sharpen the tip. It's not as creamy as I would like for it to be. I really have to trace over my waterline a lot of times for it to show up. Like you can see, if you go light, it really doesn't do anything. You have to kind of really get in there if you're gonna put it in your waterline. So I don't love that. I have other waterline eyeliners that are easier to apply, but I will give this credit where credit is due. It does last a long time. For a white eyeliner in the waterline, it does a good job with longevity, but part of that is why it is so hard to put on, but I don't know, ma'am. I have other eyeliners in my collection that I would grab for, especially considering this is $17 and just comparing it to the market, this isn't one of the better priced items in the line. I think this is a pass. I really don't think you need this. It's actually a little bit harder to work with than it needs to be. Just to show you another way you can use it, you can use it to kind of clean up underneath the brow. But it's not on the creamier side of pencils. So yeah. Liquid liner. This is interesting. So she calls this the eyeliner marker at the borderline. I have it in black. It's $19. Same white packaging and a six month shelf life. So this is actually pretty short for a liner. Here is what the tip looks like. And just so you can see the color distribution. Very black. Very nice. I really love the formula on this. It lasts all day. It doesn't fade it doesn't budge it's not too watery of a formula so it's not going to seep into the fine lines on the eyes i did notice a little bit of smudging where my eye really hoods over right here throughout the day so there was a very very subtle dark shadow left over from a little bit of transfer but i didn't get too bad of transfer there was just like a tiny bit but nothing that really bothered me i completely ruined this makeup look by adding the liquid shadow it's not as cute now <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me fix this really quick before I continue on. Okay, I just had to add a little bit of black back into the look. But anyways, this eyeliner is almost perfect. Almost. But in my opinion, there is a design flaw. So I think that this part right here is too thick and that the pencil is not long enough. Because when I go to create a line like this, this gets in the way. I really can't get as precise of a line. It's just too short. I can't get the length that I need to create a wing. And this doesn't allow me to get it as close to my lash line. But the quality of the product that is inside this pen, phenomenal. As you can see, it is a felt tip liner. And I really like the felt tip liners. And you can see it's not too wet, so it makes the wings super Super easy because of this felt tip liner that's not too flimsy so it has a little bit of stiffness to it it allows you to get the thinnest line ever for everyday makeup wears if you really like a thin line this will give it to you so give me a minute <laughs> let me do my eyeliner yeah this eyeliner marker pencil thingy almost perfect just that one little flaw and the only other thing I need to check on is how long this lasts you know sometimes these liners will dry out in like a month and so you have to keep repurchasing as long as this doesn't dry out in like a month or good it's a good one okay so there were two mascaras that launched I picked up the lengthening one I believe yes the flourishing lengthening mascara I believe there is also a volumizing one but I personally like some length I actually like the packaging of this I like the shape of it I think it's cool <laughs> so this is one of my favorite ones of packaging and I feel like it's a little heavier same deal with where it's made but it does have a six month shelf life here is what the wand looks like if you have short sparse lashes like me you're gonna like this wand because it's not too big the bristles are nice and small it is a rubber 
your wand. I really like this mascara. It's very rare for me to like a mascara on first use, but I loved the results with this on first use. So I'm excited about this. Let me just throw it on and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, so this is just with like two coats. I don't have much lashes to work with, so I promise you this is pretty impressive for a brand new, newly opened mascara. I'm going to continue to use it to see how the mascara develops, you know, as it's been open more times and a little bit of air is let in. I did post the top five mascaras for short sparse lashes actually like this past week, so definitely check that out. But this is giving me similar feelings to some of those mascaras in terms of how it's worked the first few years. Uses. I don't think it's gonna make the top five mascara list ever, but I really, really like this mascara. So it's very rare of me to say that, but they did a good job. I could not help myself. I had to pick up a pair of false lashes. They were two different styles. I went with the Grow and Show pair, which looks like this. They have that really nice winged out effect. I thought they looked super pretty online. Now these are $16, which is on the more expensive side when it comes to false lashes. You know, I'm a huge Ardell fan. I think you can get great lashes for half the price of this, even less, especially if you buy it in a pack. This is the only item that I haven't tried yet. I just didn't happen to wear false lashes last week, but here's what they look like up close. Super good. I feel like they look really natural. Let's see how they fit against my eye. The band is really, really, really thin, so I don't know how long these lashes are gonna last. They're a bit long on my eye, but I do have a smaller eye, so I think they're actually a pretty good length. And they look quite natural, not too dramatic. All right, let me pop these on and I'll show you how they look. I do, I'm gonna trim them a little bit, but yeah. Okay, let's move on to the face highlighters. Now, the highlighter formula that she came out with is called the Interstellar Highlighter Topper. I think it's interesting that these have the word topper in them because they don't really catch me as toppers. I think they feel like a straight up highlight to me. But yeah, I picked up two shades. There's quite a few. I wish I had picked up Miss Mercury or Miss Saturn, which seems to be a little bit more peachy, but let me show you the shades that I picked up. I had to, had to, had to pick up Miss Neptune, which is the purple since I bought the purple eyeshadow palette. By the way, oh, deets on this. Sorry, I got way too into it too fast. 24 month shelf life, <gasps> made in Italy. Okay, that's why I like these. It is an interesting kind of swatch. Like it doesn't swatch very pretty. I'm not gonna lie, I swatched it and I was like, <laughs> uh, but it looks a lot prettier on the face. And then the other shade that I got is Miss Venus, which is kind of like this goldy color. You can see I'm not getting any fallout and it's kind of more subtle on the hands, but let me show you on the cheek. I don't feel like I have a highlight formula like these. Now these are $22. I think that's a pretty good price for an individual highlighter. And the packaging is the same as the eyeshadow palette. So I do have the same feelings. I don't necessarily like the way it looks, but it feels good. It doesn't feel like plastic. It also doesn't feel super heavy in luxe either. Like a luxe packaging that looks like this would feel like a brick. You know, it would feel really heavy. This, you can definitely feel that it's hollow. Luxury packaging wouldn't feel hollow with this little raise here, but it's fine. It's good. It's sturdy enough. <laughs> okay, so let's do Miss Neptune first. I'm gonna use this as my inner corner highlight. We do get some fallout on that, but look. It doesn't necessarily leave a shine, but something about it's really smoothing to the skin. It's almost more like color. Like you can see it's not a blinding highlight by any means. It's an interesting formula. I don't have anything like this. I don't really love this as a highlight, this color anyways, but I do like it right here or on the eyelid, it looks really, really cool. But this color is interesting. It's one of the more unique ones, so I don't expect a lot of people to be interested in this, but it's neat. I don't have another formula like this. And let me show you what the golden one looks like. I mean, you can see that golden one is a little bit more reflective, but these are kind of more, you know, you're not really gonna see it to the side but you're only gonna see it when your cheek is facing directly in the light. I think this color would be beautiful on somebody with a deeper complexion. It's pretty. I like it because it's not blinding, but the color in it is quite strong. There's like a mint color. If you turn, it's gonna be super mint. There are more wearable champagne colors and I'd be interested to try those because I think I messed up with buying colors. I shouldn't have gotten these colors. It's weird because I don't love the way these look, but I love that I don't have a 
formula like these. I much prefer the gold. I'm gonna wear the gold a lot more, but it's not quite bright enough for me to want to use it as a highlighter. They're just not shiny, but they leave some pop. I don't know. This is the one formula where I am like, I don't know. I have watched a couple reviews and I think people who got the more champagne ones thought that the highlight looked better. It looked more natural. It looked like a true highlight, but these colors I got, they're kind of weird on my face. So I don't recommend these. I don't know. I don't recommend these colors, but I don't want to say like I don't recommend these highlights. If you like a blending highlight, probably not. But if you see a color that you like, probably. They're good, but I'm still working out my thoughts on these. Lips is the last section that we have. There were four lip formulas that came out. The first one's a plumping lip gloss. I didn't get it. I didn't want a pumping lip gloss. It was, I don't even know how much it was, but the second formula is a lip stain marker. And I picked it up and I lost it. I have no clue where it is. I thought it would be in my purse on the day that I wore it. I have a picture for you. I picked up the shade Miss Berry, $16. I liked it a lot. <laughs> And I'm actually really upset that I can't find it, but a quick two cents that I have on it smelled really nicely and it really was like a good lip stain. It didn't last forever. It did eventually fade away, but it didn't fade away in like a cracky, patchy kind of way. Just kind of naturally did fade away. It wasn't like super duper long lasting, but when I ate, it didn't transfer. It didn't leave that line down here that a lot of lip products do leave. It's just great when you want a bolder lip color and you really want it to last and you don't want it to transfer if you're going to be eating. I really like this. I'm really upset that I don't have it right now. I think it's nice. I will say though, it did apply a little bit patchy. It didn't look perfect, but in terms of functionality, just not getting it everywhere, it worked great. Didn't look the greatest, but it was good enough just because of how functional it was. The next lip formula that I have is the lipstick formula. I got a matte lipstick. Comes in the same gray packaging in the shade Roller Skates. So these are $19. This looks like, like a little astronaut in a space suit. Yeah, again, it's a $19 lipstick. It doesn't feel incredibly luxury, but it doesn't feel cheap. It has a nice magnetic closure. This is made in in the USA with imported and domestic parts and an 18 month shelf life, which is pretty good. So I only have one color. Of course, there is quite a large range. It does have that soft matte finish. For this shade, I do want to line my lips really quickly. I'm just using Olimar Cosmetics Dulce. Just something to add a little bit of depth. You'll see, just a little bit, and here's the color. It has that soft matte finish to the lips. Honestly, it's quite pretty. It's a decent formula, pretty comfortable. Not hydrating by any means, but not super drying either. I really like it. It's one of those lipsticks that's nice to reapply. It's just comfortable and you can kind of do it without looking in a mirror uh, just because of how easily it glides onto the lips. You know how some matte lipsticks, there's a lot of drag and tug on the lips? Not with this one. Very creamy, really great wearable color. I've quite enjoyed this. It's not the longest lasting lipstick, especially if you eat, it's going to be gone. But because it's so nice and easy to reapply, I really don't mind that. So it's a solid lipstick. I think $19 is a bit much but I'm not one to talk. <laughs> I do like the lipstick formula. I'm taking a look at the range in front of me. They're all kind of more nudie tones, really pretty. I think that this is a decent pickup. I'm quite happy with it. I wouldn't mind picking up a few other shades. It's nice. Now let's talk about one of the most disappointing products in the brand. And this is the last product that I have to talk about today. And I was a lot more chatty than I intended to be. So this is the Plumping Lip Gloss. It is $17. And it is just, comes in the tiniest, littlest things. Um, made in USA, what else? 18 month shelf life. I picked up the shade Waterfalls. This little thing is $17. This looks like a sample, like a lab sample. This does not look like the final product to me. It looks like they never finished it. This is the cheap packaging that I was initially expecting. Like this looks cheap, it feels pretty cheap to me. Here's what the applicator looks like. I don't love this kind of applicator. I love a doe foot, but there is something to be said about bacteria not getting in this, so it could be nice. There's some interesting colors in the range as well as some nudie tones. Let me put it on. Oh. 
see it's kind of hard to control as well as you can see because of, why did i just do this oh my god this is the first time that it's happened but it is a little bit harder to control now my lips are gloppy give me a second so it does have the kind of that minty plumping sensation but it's not overwhelming it's definitely tolerable it's more comfortable than a lot of other plumpers that i've dealt with but if you hate the feeling of lip plumpers you're not going to like this at all it looks quite juicy here but that's because you saw how much i accidentally applied if you apply like a reasonable layer it's not very juicy looking this i swear makes your lip color disappear this does not last on the lips at all unless you literally do nothing but if you're talking even drinking disappears causes the lipstick underneath to disappear with it as well I find the lip color lasts a lot longer when I don't have this lip gloss on and all around I just don't like anything about this lip gloss I think it's overpriced I don't like the packaging and the longevity on it is just terrible for $17 uh, -uh you can get way better at the drugstore so that's by far in my opinion <laughs> my opinion the worst item <laughs> in the collection. But anyways, let me get myself together and round up my thoughts. Here's the final look of all of the REM <laughs> products that I put on my face today. So let's go over my final thoughts. I have some products that I think are must-haves from the line that are really, really good and worth it. Some products that I think are pretty good, definitely worth picking up if you're interested. And I have some products that I think you definitely should stay away from. So the two favorite items in the line, in my opinion, number one is the eyeliner. I think the formula on this is just spectacular. And I actually really like the mascara. I'm not sure yet if it's a must-have, must-grab. But upon first impressions, this is one that I felt like has been very, very solid. Following closely behind those, I've enjoyed the eyeshadow palette. I don't love the color story. Like, nothing about it screams amazingness to me. And honestly, the format of the eyeshadows kind of remind me of CoverGirl, that cheapness again. But the quality itself is really nice. So, I mean, if you want one of the eyeshadow palettes, I have nothing bad to say about the quality. Same thing with this shimmer liquid shadow. It doesn't move me. I don't love the the color I don't love the effect on the eye but it does exactly what it's supposed to do it lasts a really good time and it wears really well kind of a tear below those I like the lipstick a lot I don't think there's anything super unique about it but I'm super happy to have it you know not anything that's really special but it's a good solid lipstick formula with the highlighters the highlighters are next I don't know I've heard a lot of people like these so maybe go with their opinions but I don't know like there's something special about the way that these lay on the skin. They kind of become one with the products underneath, which is quite unique. But I just don't know if I like the reflection yet. I haven't decided. So the way it sits on the face, gorgeous. The reflection of it, not sure yet. <laughs> and then these four products are absolute no's from me. So the first one is the Eye Cold. These have a lot of drag. They're just, they're too difficult and dry to play around the eye area with, in my opinion. The matte liquid shadow, these creased on me and looks terrible. The eyelashes, they're not bad. I mean, they're pretty wearable lashes, but you might as well buy an Ardell lash for four to five bucks. I think Ardell has lashes that I like better than these, honestly. So these are just overpriced, in my opinion. And then the most terrible thing is this little cheap lip gloss. <laughs> It's just battle around in my opinion. Oh, and I almost forgot the lip marker. I do like it. I don't think it's amazing, but I do like it. Uh, but yeah, those are my in-depth thoughts about REM Beauty, being completely honest and transparent with you guys, as I always am. But I just wanted to let you know, I really feel like I got into it since I wore these products all week. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and you found it helpful. Thank you guys so much for joining me in Vlogmas. I hope you're having fun. So make sure you're subscribed so that I can see you for tomorrow's video. Bye guys, have a good one.